Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do question 5 to the Jan 2021 POA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions to this same paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. Now, with that, let's get straight into the question. So, we're going to take a read on the left hand side, and then we're going to do the solution on the right hand side. So, it says the following balances. Oops, I'm trying to highlight that. It didn't work. Oh, oh there you go. Right. So it says the following balances were extracted from the ledgers of Black Cake Enterprise Limited on 31st December 2020. All right. So we have Black Cake Enterprise Limited trial balance as at 31st December 2020. Now, the thing is, this, <laughs> this is not a trial balance because as you should know by now, a trial balance has two columns, one for all of the debit balances in the ledger and one for all of the credit balances in the ledger. So this is just a list of balances. You know, so use any form provided on page 23, prepare the trial balance. Um, include the account and the amount to make both sides of the trial. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's read that part carefully again. Include the account and the amount to make both sides of the trial balance equal. Hmm. So that's telling us something. That's telling us that maybe this trial balance is not going to balance unless we help it balance. Ooh, all right. So let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look. So the first thing we have is we have revenue, 110,000. Revenues have credit balances. So let's, um, let's deal with that, 110,000. So of course, well, the debit column is the left side, the credit column is the right side, okay? Next, we have bank overdraft. Bank overdraft is a liability, and liabilities also have credit balances. Next, we have fixtures and fittings. That is an asset. Assets have debit balances. Next, we have the provision for depreciation on the same fixtures and fittings. And what that means, the depreciation, the purpose of it is to reduce the value of the asset in the balance sheet. The asset has a debit balance. To reduce a debit balance, you're going to need a credit balance, right? The provision for depreciation is classified as a contra asset. Its balance works against an asset balance. Hence, it has the opposite type of balance. Land is an asset, and as, as a result, assets have debit balances, so you're going to see 59,000 in debit column. Capital, well, capital has its own classification as capital, and capital has a credit balance. Um, we're seeing two items, inventory and receivables. They are both assets, so they are both going to be in the debit column. Uh, next, I'm seeing trade payables. So payables is a liability. That's money we owe to people. That's going to be in the credit column. Purchases is an expense. And as such, we'll go in the debit column. Discount received is a revenue. Whoops, sorry. Right, is a revenue. Revenues go in the credit column as well. Now, these last three items here, wages and salaries, discount allowed, sundry expenses, those are all expenses. And those will all go in the debit column. Now, if we were to add up or total the columns as they are, I want you to notice that the debit column has a total of 212,100 but the credit column has a total of 212,500. And that's where the instruction in the final sentence here comes into play. It says include the account and the amount to make both sides of the trial balance equal. So when your trial balance is in balance, we need a suspense account. And the amount that we would have to put here, well, first of all, it would be on the debit side because we would need a figure to go here to add to make the debit side equal to the credit side. And some simple arithmetic will prove that that is 400, right? So 212,500 to 12,500. So we've just made our trial balance balance. Okay, so maybe we might have some errors to correct, uh, maybe to close up a suspense account or something. All right, now the next part of the question we have here is for each scenario, let me just scroll up on this side here. All right, so it says for each scenario, identify the following errors which will lead to discovery. So in the first instance, we have a sale of goods on account, which means on credit, for 1800 to M. Mullins had been posted to the account of M. Miller. So that is an error of commission. So when you use the wrong person's account for that transaction, that's an error of commission. The next item, office equipment sold for 2000 had been posted to the sales account. Well, when you use the wrong account and it, it doesn't have to do with personal accounts, that's an error of principle. And in the third instance, right, we have wages of 4,500 for the office workers have been debited to bank and credited to wages. 
Ooh, they mixed up, they mixed up the debit and the credit there, didn't they? When you pay an expense, you're supposed to debit the expense account and credit the bank account because when you pay money out of bank, your bank is going to decrease. Bank is an asset and to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit. So this is called a complete reversal of entries. All right. Now let's see what they want for the last part of the question. Oh, by the way, I do have a whole series on error correction. And once I remember, I'm going to put a link up there with a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check out that playlist. They might find it very informative. All right, scrolling down, it says, prepare the journal entries um, to correct the errors identified in B on page 24 and narratives are not required. Okay, so again, in this same paper, they give you journal entries to do, but take out the narrative. Again, I know some of you guys like that because you're not too comfortable with narratives, but that means you need to practice them more. Narratives are a very fundamental aspect of journal, journal work. And as accountants, that's also a very basic thing that we have to know how to do. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up because you don't, you don't need to see a format, right? So to be able to do these things. So let's talk about this first one here. So a sale of goods on account um, for 1800 to M. Mullins had been posted to the account of M. Miller. And let me also just scroll up on this side to bring this one into a slightly better view. Okay, so if we sold goods on credit to Mullins, we supposed to debit Mullins, but we didn't. We debited Miller. So two things. Anytime you're correcting errors, you have to one, undo the error or undo the wrong, and two, do the right. So we were supposed to debit Mullins, but we debited Miller. So it means we did, we did not debit Mullins. So first thing is to debit Mullins, do the right. And the next thing is to undo the wrong. So we debited Miller by error. So we have to undo that debit. To undo a debit, you have to do the opposite, which is credit. So we're going to credit Miller. And again, as you should know, the protocol for entering transactions or recording transactions in the general journal requires you to put the debit entry first and the credit entry second and note that the credit entry is indented. And if we were to put the narrations, they would go here. Okay, let's go on to the next one. It says, office equipment sold for 2000 had been posted to the sales account. So what they mean had been posted, the, the entry that was supposed to go in the office equipment account was put in the sales account. So if you sell an asset, the asset is decreasing. So you were supposed to credit the asset account. Well, actually you're supposed to credit disposal, but that's not on your syllabus. So let's not go down that road. But long story short, we credited sales and we were not supposed to credit sales. So if you were not supposed to credit sales, how do you fix that? You have to uncredit sales and to uncredit sales, you have to do the opposite, which means you have to debit the sales account. And the credit was supposed to go to office equipment. So we're going to credit office equipment. Again, I feel I might want to dispute that, but let's not get too technical. Let's keep it simple. And finally, we have a complete reversal. Now here, we have to do both of those things for both accounts. So we, we debited bank and we credited wages. <clears throat> so the first thing is that wasn't supposed to happen. So you're going to debit wages and credit bank. But if you just do it once using 4,500, you're just going to cancel the error. The transaction that was supposed to be recorded would still need to be recorded. So you're going to have to debit wages and credit bank for 4,500 again. So the complete reversal of entries, the correcting entry requires the correct debit and credit, but with twice the amount. Once to undo the wrong and the second time to do the right. So we're going to see a debit to wages expense for 9,000, which is two times 4,500 and a credit to bank for 9,000, which again is two times 4,500. Right. So ladies and gents, that is it for the Jan 2021 paper, right? All in all, it was a, a pretty decent exam. I think most people could have done this if they were well prepared, but I think that statement could apply to almost any exam. All right. If you did it, give me some feedback in the comments below. How did you find it? Um, I don't know if you would have gotten any results by now. I did normally supposed to be out. If you got any results, let me know how you did. Anyway, ladies and gents, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the description to check out the playlists and the links to the other videos. And until next time, keep safe. Bye-bye.